So in last uh, lectures, we have seen about uh, open sets, closed sets, limit points, interior points, closure of the set. Then uh, also we have discussed what is the subspace. And then if you have an open set in a subspace, then what is its relation with open set in main metal space, etc. All such results we have done. Today we will concentrate on very important idea in uh, metal spaces and it is called equivalent matrix. So we are going to define first what is meant by two matrix are equivalent and then we will try to solve certain problems where we will show how uh, we prove that matrix are equivalent. See the general idea behind this concept is suppose we have a matrix space x comma d and on the same set x you have say some another matrix b star Okay, so we have a same set, but two different matrix. You know now this is possible. In case of real number set, you know that if you have a matrix D, you do a distance where we define it as D of X comma Y is mod of X minus Y. This is a usual matrix. Also on uh, that R, you can define uh, a di uh, discrete matrix. It means uh, whenever X and Y are equal, D, X, Y is 0 and when X and Y are not equal, D, X, Y is 1. Also on the same uh, set uh, A or R, you can define, suppose D is a metric, also you know that K into D is also a metric, when K is any positive real number. So it is very ordinary thing that on the same set, same set, set is same X, but on that set X, we can define different metrics. See, it is different that whenever two different sets are there, X and Y, and on X you define a metric. D and on Y you define a metric D star. This is a different thing because the sets are different. But here sets are same, X is same, but on X I am going to define different metrics. Then uh, when you will say that those metrics are equivalent, this is the uh, main issue. And in this uh, respect, we should know that whenever they both the matrix D and D star, they do same topology on X. They do same topology. Means what? Whenever you consider D open set, it is also D star open set. And conversely, that means any D star open set is also D open set in X. So what is meant by D open set and D star open set? You know that open sets when you consider, what you uh, what is the definition of open set? If you take any point X belonging to G, suppose G is open subset of X, then what is our definition? You should recall it. Whenever you take any point X belonging to G, right? Then what? You can find R. There exists R you are saying. There exists R, it means you can find the value of R greater than 0 such that if you consider open sphere around X, it is entirely inside G. That is called open set in G. And that open set, we will say it is induced by the distance T. Now suppose you take a metric B star, which is also defined on the set X. And suppose uh, I have a set, uh, say F in that uh, metric space, X B star, which is also open. But this open set will be with respect to metric D star. That means if you take any point X belonging to, uh, say, uh, F, then uh, what will happen? There will be D star open sphere around X, which will be entirely contained in F. So, D star open sphere and D open sphere means what? The distance that we are taking, because you know open sphere means what? Whenever you take SXR, what it means? SXR, suppose I take X is the point of G, then what is SXR? It is an open sphere around with center matrix and radius R. So, all the points in that uh, metric space which are uh, at a distance less than R from X, that is SXR. Similarly, D star, whenever you take, we will consider distance D star. So there, open sphere with respect to D star means the distance that we are thinking of is not D X Y here, it will be D star X Y. Okay, so whenever I say that both matrix induce same topology on the uh, set X, what do you mean that? What do you mean by that is this? 
that whenever you take any open set, any D open set, it is also D star open set and conversely, that means any D star open set is also a D open set. So, uh, uh, we will uh, define this first. We will define, write down the definition of this. Uh, two matrix D and D star on the uh, set X. So, it will be something like this. Two matrix D and D star on X are said to be equivalent are said to be equivalent they are said to be equivalent if the collection of all open sets if collection of all open sets Collection of all open sets in matrix space XB in matrix space X comma D is identical with is identical with the collection of identical with collection of all open sets collection of all open sets. Uh, in matrix space X D star that means the induced set of all whenever you take collection of all open set with respect to this matrix D and that collection is identical with the collection of all open sets so collection of all open sets uh, in X comma D what do you, what do you mean by that they are all open sets but those open sets are means a, a, open sphere etc. Whenever we think of that open set, there comes the concept of open sphere. That open sphere is with respect to metric D. So every open set in X comma D is also open set in X comma D star and every open set in X comma D star is also open set in X comma D. This is where we will say that both the uh, metrics are identical. That means what in short we can say both these metrics D and D star they give rise to same family of open sets. Same family of open sets they give rise to. So uh, we should uh, establish some criteria. One theorem we will prove first. And then also we will see how the how can we check that two matrix are equivalent, etc. So this is the important theorem. So let D and D star be two matrix. B and D star, B2 matrix on uh, X, B2 matrix on X, and let F and X star, let F and X star be the family of uh, open sets, B families of open sets. With respect to D and D star, respectively. With respect to D and D star, respectively. Then, matrix D and D star, matrix D and D star are equivalent if and only if. Are equivalent if and only if first part for each open set G for each open set G in F for each open set G in F and each point X belonging to G and each point x belonging to G, there is a D star open sphere, there exists D star open sphere, D star open sphere, S star, 
x r star which is subset of g and second condition is exactly similar but in opposite way for each open set for each open set set g star in f star For each open set G star in F star, and each point, each point X belonging to G star, there is, there exists D open sphere. There exists D open sphere. SSR, which is subset of G star. So this is the uh, theorem which gives you equivalent condition. It means in short what? See, read the theorem statement properly. What we are saying is D and D star are two matrix defined on the same X. Okay. Now this metric will give rise to some open sets in the uh, metric space X. D star also this is another metric defined on the set X. Already you have done one example where you know that when you change the metric, the nature of the open sphere changes. In R2, we have done that. So you know such things. So D star is another metric and it will also give rise to some open sets. Now what we are doing is F is a family of open spheres, open sets, sorry, with respect to D. So whenever I take matrix, matrix D, then whatever open sets are generated, okay, of the set X, we will call them as F. And whenever you take matrix D star, whatever open sets will be generated of the matrix space X, we will call them to be F star. So this is the family of open sets. Generated with respect to generated due to metric D and F star is the family of open set generated with respect to metric D star. Now what we are saying, both metrics D and D star are equivalent if they satisfy this condition. For each open set G and in F and each point X belonging to G, there exists a D star open sphere. S star, X star, star, subset of G and conversely, for each open set G star in F star and each point X belonging to G star. There is this D open sphere which is subset of G star. So here it's not difficult. It's not difficult to do. What is uh, done here is very simple trick. You want to show that uh, two things are equivalent. So whenever now see this is the family of open sets F and this is the family of open sets F star. This is family of open sets generated with respect to metric D. And this is family of open set generated with respect to matrix G star. When we prove that F and X star, because F is a set of open sets, right? F star is another set of open sets, but those open sets are with respect to matrix D star. And these are the open sets with respect to matrix D. I want to prove they are equivalent. So what I should do? F is equal to F star. This is what I should do. For that, what I should do? F is subset of F star. And also I should do F star is subset of F. Okay, so we will write proof. There we will say it is enough to prove. It is enough to prove uh, F is subset of F star. F is subset of F star. This one is equivalent to every subset of F star and two is equivalent to F star is subset of Like that we will do. So it is enough to uh, prove that. Uh, we will say, instead of this we will say, this first statement one is equivalent to F is subset of F star and two is equivalent to F star is subset of F. 2 is equivalent to 
your studies stop skip out here. And we will only prove first part. Because the other part we just follow similar arguments we can make, and we can prove the second part. So it is a, it will be left to you as an exercise. But we will prove first part. So we have to prove. Uh, so for we have to prove what? For each open set G in F and each uh, point X belonging to G, there, there exists D star open sphere such that S star X R star is subset of G that is given. So we will assume that uh, uh, we want to prove this. In, uh, we, have, we have to prove f and x star are equivalent. Okay. So first we will assume we will assume that f and x star. So we should say assume f and x star are equivalent. What does that mean? F is uh, equal to x star. It means what? So this implies, or this is kind of belief, F is subset of x star, and f star is subset of f. Okay. So I show that f is subset of x star. What do you mean by this? When I will say, say every subset of f star, every open set in, in f is also open set in f star. So let G belongs to f. G belonging to f. Then what? You, you are assuming every subset of f star. So when G belongs to f, it implies what? G belongs to or G is also uh, sorry, G belongs to f. So G belongs to f star also. Because why? G is subset of f star. Now, what is f star? It is a family of open sets with respect to metric D star, right? So, whenever I say G belongs to f star, what do you mean? What is the property that G possesses? G is an open set, but with respect to which metric D star? So, what do you mean by that? So, if you take any point x belonging to G, so for each x belonging to G, x belonging to G, there exists R star, there exists R star which is greater than 0 and such that, such that, such that what? You take open sphere around the x with radius R star, but this open sphere is with respect to which metric? B star. So it will be S star, x, R star. And this will be subset of And so this one goes. S star is R star is of second. So this one goes. Okay, so one is good. Have you understood what we are saying? Actually, we have to prove F and X star are equivalent, you can only this. So what do you mean by F and X star are equivalent? F is equal to X star. What does it mean? F is subset of X star, and also F star is subset of X star. Out of that, I show F is subset of X star. Now when you say f is subset of f star, any set, what is f? It is a family of open sets. So you take any open set g, but this open set is with respect to metric d. It will belong to f, but f is subset of f star, so g will also belong to f star. What does it mean? g is open set with respect to metric d star. And that means if you take any x belonging to g, there exists r star greater than 0 such that s star x r star will be subset of g. So that is first problem. Now, conversely, if one holds, we have to prove other thing. Okay, so now we will try to write that proof. So, conversely, can anyone try this proof? It's not difficult. Now, conversely, what is we are assuming one? So, conversely, let one holds. Conversely, let one holds. And now what I have to prove? F is subset of S star. To prove that. To prove that. F is subset of F star. Okay? There we assume F is subset of F star. Here I will prove F is subset of S star. There we assume F is subset of F star and prove result 1. 
Now we will assume one and two f is of set of question. So if I assume uh, f is, I want to prove f is of set of question. Okay. So Let G be long straight. Because whenever I want to prove this is subset of this, I will start some element of this. So let G be long straight. What is F? Family of open sets with respect to metric D. Let G be long straight. So for each x belonging to G, for each x belonging to G, what is given to you now? For each x belonging to G, there exists this star open sphere. This is given, right? This is not what we are assuming now. So for each x belonging to G, there exists, there exists what? There exists uh, this star open sphere. There exists R star greater than zero, such that, such that S star x R star. Okay, S star x R star is subset of G. This is subset of G. So what I can say? So it means what? It means simply like this: X uh, belongs to S x R star. X belongs to S x R star. It is subset of G. X belongs to S x R subset of G. So G is subset of G is subset of union of here it will be what S star sorry G is subset of union of S star X R star and that is subset of G okay so that means G is union of S star X R star. Do you agree with this? Because whenever I say this is the subset of this and x belongs to G, x belongs to G. So whenever I consider open spheres around x and their union, if I take, I am going to get G. So G is equal to uh, this thing. So what does it imply? Whenever I say G is union of open spheres with respect to D star, this means what? G is open in D star. G is open in uh, uh, x comma D star. It means what? It means G belongs to F star. G belongs to F star. So we started with G belongs to F, we put G belongs to F star. What does it mean? F is subset of F star. So the, see the planning in this proof. This proves F is subset of F star. This is a real key. So whenever I assume that uh, two families F and F star are equal, I want to prove one and two. What is done in this? Now, whenever two families are equal, f and x star, f is subset of x star, x star is subset of x. Now, if you assume f is subset of x star, conversely, we have to prove this. And if you assume this, we have to prove f is subset of x star. Now, second part, when you assume x star is subset of x, you can prove it there too. And 2 implies f star is subset of x. That proves equality. So, I leave this as an exercise to you because it is not much difficult. Important thing here is whenever I say that two metrics are equivalent, the family of open sets generated by uh, one metric, family of open sets generated by one metric, is equivalent to the family of open sets generated by other metric on the same series. This is the main uh, hint in this. Okay, so this is one result, and this is the base of uh, concept of equivalence of two metrics. You have to prove that both the metrics, if they generate same topology on the same x, they generate same topology on the same x. This is what we means. Okay. Now we will do one or two simple problems first. See, already we have done one result. We know this. Suppose I know that x comma d is a matrix space. Then also, then uh, this implies uh, x comma d star is also metric space. 
where d star x y is equal to m d x y upon one plus d. This result is already proven. It is a metric algorithm. What we will now prove is this: that uh, uh, these metrics are equivalent. So prove that. Prove that. D and D star are equivalent metrics. Are equivalent metrics on X. Are equivalent metrics on X. This is what we have to do. So how can you go for this? We <coughs> should know that. Every d open sphere is also d star open sphere, okay? And every d star open sphere is also d open sphere. If you do this, then proof is open. Every open sphere with respect to d is also open sphere with respect to d star and common sphere. Definition of d star is this: m d x y upon one plus d x. Okay? So how to do this? How to do this? See, if you if you want to find solution. It will be something like this. To prove that two metrics D and D star are equivalent, are equivalent. What we should do? Every D open sphere is also D star open sphere and converse. To prove that, we should prove. We should prove every d open sphere, every d open sphere. Center at x. Sphere is also always center. Center at x is also. The D star open sphere, D star open sphere, center at x, center at x, and converse. This is what I have to establish. Okay, so first we will start with say S X R. We will say S X R. Where r is greater than zero, this is suppose a d open sphere centered at x. S x r b r greater than zero b d open sphere. D open sphere centered at x. And we will assume that s star x row. S star x row b where row is greater than zero b d star open sphere d star open sphere center at x center at x where row is we have to define there exists row so row is uh, we will take as m r upon one plus r row we will take m r upon one plus r Now what we have to show is we will show and to prove that S star x row is subset of S x r. This we will show. S star x row is subset of S x r. How to prove this? Very simple. When I want to prove this is subset of this, I will start eliminating this. So let let y be not two. S star x row. What is what does this mean? This implies d x y is less than or equal. Y belongs to S star x row, so it will be d star. So d star x y will be less than rho. But what is d star x y? You know, definition of d star x y is so that implies m d x y. Upon one plus d x y is less than 
rho. What is rho? Mr upon one plus r. So it is less than Mr upon one plus r. Okay, so now what? From this, what is the conclusion? M dxy upon uh, 1 plus dxy. So what I can first do is I can remove m from both sides. It is you can remove m, you can remove. So what you get is what you get is dxy uh, upon 1 plus dxy is less than r upon 1 plus r. Out of that, r is positive. What is r? It is radius. So it is always positive, so you can cross multiply and we can say 1 plus r into dxy is less than r into 1 plus dxy. Okay, so what does this mean? 1 into dxy is dxy plus r into dxy is less than r plus r into dxy. And now that simply implies dxy is less than r because this is common. So dxy is less than r. What does this imply? Uh, y belongs to sxr. Right? So very simple. Y belongs to s star x rho we started with. Right? And we proved y belongs to sxr. What does it mean? S star x rho. What is s star x rho? It is an open sphere. Center at x with radius rho but with respect to metric this term. And it is the element of SXR. What is SXR? It is an open sphere center at x with radius r with respect to metric d. And so every discard open sphere is a subset of d open sphere. This is what uh, we have said. Okay, so from this we started with y belongs to s star x rho. So suppose this is 1. y belongs to s x r. This is say 2. So from 1 and 2 what you get? s star x rho is subset of s x r. This is, what, this is the conclusion. Suppose this is capital. Now this is not over. Now we have to prove converse part. What do you mean by converse part? What I have to prove? If you take any open sphere center at x with radius r, this is open sphere with respect to d, it is subset of s star x rho we have to do. So here also it's not difficult. What you have to do is here we define, see here we define rho as mr upon 1 plus r. So it was rho in terms of r. Can I find r in terms of rho? That is also possible because here see we have given rho is equal to mr upon 1 plus r. If I cross multiply, what I get is rho into 1 plus r is equal to m r. Right? So what I can do? I want uh, here rho was in terms of r, I want r in terms of rho. So now what can be done? Multiply. So it is rho into 1, so rho, rho into r, so plus rho r. And on that side it is a bar. Okay, so what I can do is rho is equal to mr minus rho r. This term will take on that side. So rho r you can take from m minus rho. And so r is equal to this is rho is equal to r into m minus rho. So r is equal to what? Rho upon m minus rho. R will be rho upon m minus rho. So that now we will use. That we will use. So what we have to do is other way around. So I have to start with SXR and I have to prove it is subset of S star X rho. Okay. So here uh, we will uh, prove that. To prove that now what I want to do. SXR is subset of sorry. SXR is subset of S star X rho. This we want to do. Where we will take R as R as this rho upon m minus one. Rho upon m minus one. So can we can anyone do this? It's not difficult now. We want to prove SXR is subset of that. So we start with Y belongs to SXR. What does it mean? Now what does this mean? Y belongs 
to a six star. Suppose this is result number three. What does this mean? Distance between uh, x and y is less than r. But what is r? Rho upon m minus rho. So it is rho upon m minus rho. Okay. So d x y less than r implies this. So what can you say about uh, if I take uh, now suppose I take uh, instead of this suppose I take d star x y upon uh, m minus d star x y. See, it is also very simple to verify that d star x y upon m minus d star x y will be here it is sorry here it is d x y. So d star x y upon m minus d star x y will be again less than. This will be what d x y. See, this is the definition d star x y and d x y upon one plus d x y. For uh, simplicity, suppose I take d star x y as capital A. Suppose d star x y is capital A. Then what this will give you? A is equal to m into A upon one plus A. Sorry, one plus. Uh, What I am taking is here. See, d star x y. I want to express d. So what I have done is d x y is taken as a. So what I can write d star x y is equal to m a upon one plus a. Now when you cross multiply and do all the calculations, finally you will get a as d star x y upon m minus d star x y. We can verify this. Cross multiply you do. What will be that? D star x y plus a into d star x y. And that will be m into a. Right? Now what I want? A value I want to calculate. Value of a I want to calculate. So this term you take on left hand side. Sorry, right hand side. So I get d star x y as what? M a minus a into d star x y. So you can take a common here. So finally what you get is d star. I will not write x y. D star is equal to what? What is D star x y? It will be uh, a common I am taking. So a into bracket m minus D star. And so what is a? D star upon m minus D star. This is that. So this is other way on. So we can verify all such results. We can. This is m. Uh, this is okay. D star. D star x y is m a and minus. Uh, a into d star, a into d star x. So this is what a into m minus d star. So what is a? It will be d star upon what you mean? D star upon m minus d star. But what is a? It is d x y. So we got this d x y is d star x y upon m minus d star x y, and this is less than rho upon m minus rho. Because this is less than r, and r is rho upon m minus rho. Now, if you simplify as you know, we done did it there, what we can conclude from this? D star x y will be less than rho. So this will imply. This will imply D star x y is less than. Rho. Okay. So D star x y is less than rho. What does it mean? This implies y belongs to. Y belongs to what? Distance between x and y is less than rho, and this is a metric with respect to d star. So what I can say, y belongs to s star x rho. This is the result number four. So here in the third part we have this is not actually the result number four. From this we will finally conclude that we started with y belongs to s star. We proved y belongs to s star x rho. Okay, so this is our score. Then from three and four what I get? S star. Is subset of S star X rho. This is a B. So here in A we prove S star X rho is subset of S star, and here we prove S star is subset of S star X rho. What does it mean? Both the uh, both the metrics S and uh, both the open spheres S star and S star X star they are equal. What does it mean? Whenever I consider a metric D. Okay, then the open sphere generated by 
or open sphere center that is is taken as S star. And whenever I check on that thing B star, open sphere center that is is taken as S star X star. By all this uh, development, we have proved that those open spheres are equal. And as those open spheres are equal, the open sets generated by them also will be equal. And so they will induce same topology. Same topology will be induced on the same x by both the both these metrics x b and b star. So whenever I want to prove that certain metric is equivalent, then uh, we have to do something like this. You take open sphere with respect to first metric, open sphere with respect to second metric, and then prove that they are same. That means one is subset of other, another is subset of first. If I uh, do this uh, method, if I use this method, then it will be easily proved. Now another thing, another uh, problem I will give you as an exercise. See, suppose I take let x comma d in the matrix space. Let x in the matrix space, suppose. Then uh, you know that we have done this, that d star x y, d star x y. Suppose I uh, take it as a uh, Minimum of one and d x y. Minimum of one and d x y. You can prove that this star is a metric. First prove that. If you have proved already, okay. Otherwise prove this. Prove that this star is metric on x. Metric on x. This is you prove. I, I think we have proved this. Otherwise you can prove this. It's nothing difficult because minimum of one and d x y. We are checking. Okay, so uh, d, d, d is a metric already, so you know dxy is greater than or equal to 0. And we are taking minimum of 1 and dxy. Naturally, that quantity will be either dxy or 1. If it is dxy, it is already greater than or equal to 0 because it is a metric. If it is not uh, 1, uh, if it is not dxy, if it is 1, 1 is always greater than 0. So in any case, this star xy is greater than 0. Now, if I want to, second part, whenever I want to do, this star x y will take as 0. So minimum of 1 and d x y must be 0. But minimum of 1 and d x y when it will be 0. But d x y is 0. And when d x y is 0, d being the metric, we know x. If and only x is equal to y. So that part is also done. Then the symmetry can be proved. Triangle inequality also you can introduce d x y. You can introduce z here. Use triangle inequality because d is already metric. And so d x y is we already know d x y is what? Less than or equal to uh, d x z plus d z y. So anyway, it is metric we can easily prove. Now what we want to show that uh, these metrics are equivalent. These metrics are equivalent. What you will do for this? What you will do? In previous problem you know the technique now. You have to prove that open sphere with respect to x is also open sphere with respect to uh, sorry open sphere uh, on x with respect to d is also open sphere with respect to d star center at x. So what you will do is take SXR and take SX row. Okay, SX row. This should be S star X row, you can see. This should be open sphere, center and X with radius R with respect to metric D. And this is S star X rows, row is a matrix, is an open sphere, center and X with respect to metric D star. And you want to do they are equal. That means this is subset of that and that is subset of this. You have to define properly rho and r, r in terms of rho, rho in terms of r, or anything you try to uh, logically you prove, right, in mathematics it is not just one method that is always used and only one method is correct, nothing of that sort. You can use any technique, but you have to prove that SX star and S star X rho, they are equal, and whenever you want to, SX star you want, it is an open sphere, open sphere means it what, it is a set, right, Open sphere means it is a set. And whenever I want to prove that two sets are equal, what is our technique? You show this is subset of that and that is subset of this. If you prove this, then we are true. So this is a problem. I leave it uh, to you as an exercise. And now, uh, there is one important theorem. Just I will write down the theorem. Proof we will do in the next lecture, possibly. What I want to do is, whenever I say uh, I will do these things in the next lecture, you should think about what can be the proof and be prepared whenever you uh, come for the next lecture. That is important. So theorem says that uh, see because every time uh, it is not possible to means 
it will be tedious job. It's not possible. Uh, not like that. It is not impossible actually. But uh, it is a tedious job because you have to define R, you have to define rho, and then use all that technique that uh, A subset of B and B subset of A, A type technique. And then the result is good. But then this is a good uh, theorem which may help you. What that theorem says is let D and D star. Let D and D star uh, be uh, two matrix on a matrix. Be two matrix on matrix. If there exist, if there exist uh, two real numbers K one and K two. If there is two real numbers K1 and K2, K1 and K2 greater than zero actually, K1 and K2 both greater than zero, such that K1 into dxy, K1 into dxy is a uh, less than or equal to d star xy. And less than or equal to k2 into dxy, k2 into dxy. For all x and y belonging to x, not only for one pair. For all x and y belonging to x, then the matrix D and D star, then matrix D and D star are equivalent. How it is to be done in the next lecture. 